Got sideways. Somebody looked like made some contact. Uh oh, there. we've got a problem. Got contact here for sure. Daryl Walker from Joe. Uh oh, Walker's car gets on his foot and over and over. Daryl Walter tumbling down the backstretch in what appears to be a very, very serious crash. It looked like the car was going to slide through the grass there and be okay, but then I don't know if it crossed some pavement or something it dug in. Yes, Nitty. Take the lead away from Newman, but Newman will have nothing of it. No, oh, got trouble getting into three, guys. Joey Logano. Big crash. Oh, he's oh, tied no. down. Over and over, Logano goes between three and four. Hmm, no. The car will come back to rest on all four tires. Really just kind of a stack up effect. Like was one of them got on the brakes and kind of forced. Yeah, look at Tony Stewart just missing this crash, man. Here's where it really gets, gets exciting. Man, we talked about that there's nowhere to go as you come off of these corners, and when something like this happens, you, you really have, you make a commitment, and you've got one opportunity really to miss this wreck. Tony Stewart did a great job. Some others got. a specialized team completely dedicated to restrictor plate racing less than a dozen people oh and we've got trouble on the track and it's kyle bush upside down big time crash kyle bush goes upside down and rolls down across on his roof here on lap 26 cars comes back over and now side over side barrel rolls and comes to rest on its wheels yeah, you can't put any blame on anybody, I don't think, here. Although I think we do see a little contact between the 33 and the 5. But when he pulls out there, that car is automatically going to start coming back a little bit because he's come out against a, a brick wall of wind right there. Even though he's got to run, that car automatically slows down when he pulls out there until he starts getting that help. So if you're but if you're Tony Stewart I mean, or, or, and you're trying to get out of the gas and you're getting hit from behind, have yeah, you ever exactly. happened, had that happen where you get hit from behind and you can't actually slow your car down and try to avoid that wreck? Somewhat reminiscent of the Brian Vickers, Jimmy Johnson contact in the cup race last fall. Inconsequential, wasn't intended to happen. Whether the team could switch points. Whoa, whoa, oh, guys, whoa, boy. whoa. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I have never seen anything like that in my life. He hit that wall a ton. Oh, my gosh. That's a part of the racetrack. Oh, oh I, I, I can't even hardly watch that. It's a part of the racetrack, but Murray said was a little slick getting in. Kids. Not knowing if Michael changed his line a little bit, got a little too much into that speedy drive. Away a little bit. They're trying to oh, bring it in. Trouble behind Rusty Wallace is turning over. Rusty Wallace, 20 feet in the air, spinning, crashing. Well, I'll tell you, when they're running that close together and jockeying around position, you just know that things like this are going to happen. There's the 30 car. Mm, it's uh, hard to tell. They were so close together. But anyway, 30, 30, the 30 and the 66 go over tag. Rusty, watch the car. The minute the air gets under, inverted wing up in the air. You know, I think from the blimp, we may get it. I think that is where you're going to see it. Look at this Wallace car just disintegrating. The white flag is out. They're going to crash. Sawyer with a big run. They're crashing. Christopher Bell upside down. And climb out. Very fortunate that these trucks are as safe as they are. Look at this truck just get out of control. Probably about the fastest part of this speedway feel right out of the tri oval. Mm -hmm. It just starts tumbling. That young man with his dirt racing background, I'm sure he's had many barrel rows in his career, but none like that.
And Michael, I know you, you've been upside down. I've been upside down like that. The flipping's not that bad, but it's the landing that hurts. And that thing landed about six or eight times pretty hard. What about Brandon Brown? He slides through there. Looks like he's going to be credited with a fourth place finish. I think he might have got in the back of William Byron, and that's what got in the back of the four of Christopher Bell and turned him sideways. Jimmy Spencer is second. They come through the trioval. Checkered is waving. Ernie Evan wins, and Rusty spins and gets airborne and flips wildly right at the start finish line. Very reminiscent of his accident. At Daytona. Oh, man. Right up on the back bumper of Rusty, and he does touch him. That's and why. And around he goes. And that's one reason that Dale Earnhardt went down there. That's why he was so concerned, because he touched Rusty Wallace to start this situation, it looks like. And the car overturns about six or seven times, pirouetting on its nose, end over end, side over side, comes to a rest on its wheels. Between the start finish line. have separated themselves. A big push coming now for Harvick. Oh, oh and around man. goes a couple cars. Priest upside down. He's barrel rolling through the grass. Ryan Priest upside down in the infield. It's a move or gets help from behind and the car goes into the infield air. It just lifts right up off the ground. Violent, violent wreck. It's a push from the 43 car, and it's airborne. I mean, I, I thought that maybe it hit, you know, the the road course or or some curbing or something on the on the. Disaster. Troyer's engine blew locking the rear wheels. As he headed down off the high banks, Troyer's car dug in and began to roll with the momentum of 4,000 pounds moving at more than 150 miles an hour. As it rolled, fenders and other parts were ripped from the body and scattered on the track. Twisting through the air, it landed on its wheels and the added spring of tires and suspension made it leap into the air like a hooked sailfish. Through 18 flips, the roll cage kept the cockpit open and Troyer sustained only minor injuries.